Okay, we're back and we're working on our temperature conversion program. This is part two. We've been working with just strings. We've just been working with text and that's using string. Uh, we're going to work with numbers now. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to get the temperature from the user. And uh, the problem is when we do show input dialog, it receives it as a string and it treats it like a string. So it, in other words, text and not a number and and that has its own you know data type so what we have to do is we're gonna have to capture it using this variable here temp input and so we're gonna go ahead and write that down and now we're gonna make it equal to a j option pane um, show input dialog And uh, I don't remember which one is the one I want to use. I like to have them all be ready to go. Uh, it's one of these. Okay. Arg. Okay. Sure, we'll do that. Remember the first one is always the uh, null. It's not in a window. And then we're going to do the message. And so let's go ahead and do that. And it doesn't like it when I do it. Let me try this little thing here, and then I'll hit enter. Please hit input temp. I don't even like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put that on its own line. Temperature in Fahrenheit. And I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that anymore. I don't need those little plus signs. Okay. Arg2. Yes. Ahoy there, mateys. And this will be the title. Yeah, I'll just do that. And finally, J option pane dot. And then, of course, this is just, um, I don't know, plain, plain message, I guess. I mean, so right here, we're going to get the temperature. And remember, that's a string, okay? And in order to convert into a number, we're going to have to uh, use a class called double. And remember, Fahrenheit is going to be stored as a double precision floating point. So in order to do that, um, and then the convert to Celsius, we can just leave that there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture that um, Fahrenheit. You can use the variable. Fahrenheit equals, now, double is a class. Notice the capital D. It is built into Java and allows us to deal with double precision floating points. It has constants that go with it, but it also has parse double. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to parse that temp input. And we're going to go like that. Okay. And then what that's going to do is it's going to take uh, whatever the user put in and uh, convert it into a double precision um, floating point number. And from here on out, we can then go ahead and um, we can output it. So we need to now get the formula for converting to Celsius. So we're going to create the variable Celsius equals, and now we need that formula. So the formula is take Fahrenheit, the temperature, you subtract 32, and then you divide that number by 5 divided by 9. And some people put that in as a point, but we're going to let Java do all of the programming for us. So um, before we can multiply by 5 divided by 9, we need to subtract 32 from Fahrenheit. And so we're going to put that in a uh, parentheses. Then I'm going to take the now. So in math, of course, the order of operations is exactly like you probably learned it in math, even though you might have forgotten. And it starts with there's exponents, um, sorry, parentheses first, then exponents or things taken to power, then multiplication, division, subtra addition, subtraction. And if you know by the principles of math that addition, subtraction, it, it, it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Uh, neither does it matter multiplication division. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and take 5 divided by 9, put a little thing here. Okay. 
And then let's go ahead and output this. And what does it not like about here? It tells it cannot be resolved to a variable. So, oh, I misspelled it. Wait a minute. That's not how you spell Celsius. Or is it? Okay, it's been a long day. It is spelled with an S. Don't know why I spelled it with a C and didn't catch that. There we go. Uh, okay, so nice little you know message there. It helped me realize I wasn't, oh my goodness. Yeah, there it is again. All right, uh, okay. So there's our calculation. Let's go ahead and see what the answer is and then we gotta test it out as well. So we're gonna just do a J option pane that allows us to output uh, the answer. So, um, and I'm going to put a little semi, oops, right there, semicolon at the end. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to do is J option pane, oh, pff, sorry. Yes, it is a long day. And it show uh, uh, message dialog. Okay. No. And we're going to put the message on the next line. Oh, guess what? Let's go ahead and build our message as an output. There we go. And then we'll put a little, yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. We'll just keep it short. You guys know how to do the full J option pane show message dialog. And if you want to have the title and everything else. For now, we're going to go ahead and build out our output string. So in here, we're going to say Fahrenheit. Uh, whenever there's a plus concatenator at the end of the line, just hit enter. You know, I just put the little semicolon at the end. Um, and part of the reason why it does that is that, and it doesn't like, oh, because I forgot the little plus sign here. Um, so building strings, remember we got the concatenator. And uh, one of the things is that in the case of, uh, oh, it doesn't like that either. Can it be resolved to, a, oh, pfft. you think I'd learn by now. Okay, is... It ignores white, white space. Okay, that's what I was going to say. So Java will ignore white space. In other words, um, we can move things around line by line. Uh, we can separate them out. I'm curious as to what would happen if I did it this way. And I put lots of extra spaces. And I even hit here. Uh, obviously, that's not very readable. No one's going to be very happy with you if you code it like that and they have to read it. But notice, Java doesn't complain. It's because white space is ignored. And if you really wanted to have some wacky coding, you could actually put everything on one line of code. And that's what the semicolons is there for and these curly brackets. They're there to help separate instructions for the computer. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out because you're going to see something about this that is I'm not going to be happy with. You might not care, but I'm having a question about this. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, and okay, HVG, 100 Visions guy. That's me. Hey, what do you know? Okay, now uh, one of the things is we're going to put input in. We need to find out if that calculation is correct. And I happen to know that the freezing point in Fahrenheit is 32, which is zero Celsius. So we should get the answer zero if we did it right. 32 degrees, 32.0 degrees Fahrenheit is 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's run it again and let's give it a different number. And that's where I'll show you where it can give you some issues. And this time let's put 75 degrees in and we click okay. And uh, maybe it'll show us something. Okay, I think I have to input this one more time. Not sure what's going on. Okay, okay, ab upon second running of this, look at the answer, 23.8888889 degrees Celsius. Well, double precision floating point only can allow for so many um, uh, places after the, the dot. So that looks really bad. Uh, and so not bad, but it's just, in, who, no one really needs to know how precise in this case, this kind of an application. So what we need to do is find a way to basically round it to maybe the hundredths place.
And for that, we're going to do a little extra coding here. Um, so I'm going to, I have a little reference here that I'm using to, to write this. There's a thing called decimal format. And so what we can do is we can change the Celsius once we've calculated it correctly um, to a new uh, variable. And we're going to use a thing, uh, like I said, it's called decimal format. And this is something you do with text. And for that reason, we're going to have to go up here. We're going to need another import statement. So let's import Java dot text dot star. Okay. And then we're going to go down here. And now we're going to say, uh, oh, we have a problem, Houston. Uh, we need to build this string using a thing called decimal format. Okay. And um, we're going to just do it. There, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, we could just put new decimal format. Like so. Okay. And what you do in here um, is we need to go ahead and put the, how are we formatting this? And so usually what you do is you use the hashtag or pound sign and put a dot. Now let's say you wanted to take it out two places to the hundreds place. You would put it like that. If you have uh, long numbers with commas and things, that's how you would also uh, format the text. It's a text formatting, but it allows us to use numbers and to basically parse it out into a string. Um, and notice how we work all this in and there's not a little semicolon there. Let's go ahead and run it and see if that works. And if it does, then we're happy. Try 75 again, and there you go, 23.89 degrees Celsius. Another thing we could do is on Fahrenheit here, we could also put math.round. And I don't like the way it does that. And now what math.round does, it will just round it to uh, the nearest integer. And so we're going to go ahead and run it one last time, and... Uh, go from there. 75 degrees Fahrenheit is 23.89 degrees Celsius. So I think that's kind of the better way to go. So that wraps up this, the part two. Uh, what we're going to do is the next time uh, we come back, we're going we're gonna to allow the user to decide, are they going to convert it from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit? And then the time after that will allow the user to keep doing it until they get it right. But I hope uh, this helps you out, and uh, good luck coding out there.